Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of theaterlife.com. And today I have a special guest, like I always do, Bonnie Comley, the theater producer with her husband, Stuart Lane, who is not here today. We have Bonnie, who is an entity in her own as well. Uh, and Bonnie is the founder of Broadway HD, which is an extraordinary streaming service that is probably the finest in the world. Um, and she's also a Broadway producer. Uh, uh, she's got pictures from home on Broadway right now uh, and, and Funny Girl and several other things. Uh, she's also a member of the Drama League um, when they're going to be having their gala. I think it's on the 17th or the 19th of May. Uh, and we're going to talk about that. So we have a lot to talk about, Bonnie. Thank you so much for coming to do this. Welcome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, one of the things I want to share with our audience, too, because I was reading up about you, you know, every time you're going to come on, I probe a little bit further. And I discovered this thing that I didn't know about you, besides being a three-time Tony Award-winning producer uh, and a Drama Desk winner and an Olivier winner, you have also been honored, if I can read this all, the theater community has honored you for your philanthropic work including stuff with the Actors Fund, the Actors Fund Medal of Honor, the Drama League Special Con Contribution to the Theater Award, and the Paul Newman Award from Arts Horizon. You're a philanth philanthropist as well. Wow. I, I didn't know all these special things about you in the background, Bonnie. It's all part of the industry. It's all just, you know, working in the industry and supporting the industry wherever and whenever we can. So um, the Drama League is one of my main focuses right now. Uh, I'm actually in my second year as president of the board um, of a four year uh, term that I'll serve there. Um, and you mentioned our gala, which is coming up on uh, May 19th at the Zigfield Ballroom. The Drama League is actually- Yeah, I just want to insert this gala. You're, the Drama League Gala is one of my favorite events of the whole season because it brings together so many people in a really special kind of way. And I want to share with, all these people are nominated for Distinguished Performance of the Year. Like how many are, are, are nominated? We have probably around like 75. So there is a dais that has, you know, three or four tiers of people and it's an afternoon luncheon. Um, it is really special because we, uh, we nominate people that are uh, not just on Broadway, but off Broadway and some off off Broadway. So there's one competitive acting award. Um, and then there are other uh, awards that are um, for best you know, new musical, best new play, best revival of a musical, and, and best, uh, um, uh, what did I miss one? <laughs> and uh, and also for, um, we give out a, a, a several honorary awards. So this year we're giving an award to the Drama Bookshop, which was founded by the Drama League, um, and then uh, broken off because the members of the Drama League um, back a hundred years ago, uh, when it was founded, uh, decided that somebody else would run that uh, store, uh, that bookstore better. Um, so that was broken off, but we're actually honoring it because it was going to go out of business. And then um, four, uh, four gentlemen bought it and decided they wanted to, you know, that it was an important institution that needed to be preserved. So uh, Thomas Kale, J James Niederlander, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda, and Jeffrey Seller uh, bought it and decided to uh, basically, uh, you know, resurrect it um, in the pandemic, which they did, and they opened it up. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful bookstore. Um, it's stunning that they, they made it into something so much more than it even ever was, along with keeping everything that it was there before. It's fabulous, absolutely. Yeah. Fabulous. They're yeah. well deserving of this award. Yeah. So yeah, thank and you're giving you. Andre de Shields is getting a special. Andre de Shields, um, Lear de Vessenay, who is a, a Drama League directing fellow, who is actually the director of Into the Woods on Broadway this year. And um, Darren Odiode, who is a huge patron of the arts. So we're honoring the four of them with our honorary awards. And then, as I said, we have our um, competitive awards for the shows. And then we have one um, award that goes for um, an actor. Uh, so it could be Broadway, off Broadway, off off Broadway, uh, you know, any gender, um, and uh, uh, comedy or drama or musical or play. 
So it just, it's, it's called the distinguished. It's called the distinguished achievement in the theater award. And what I love about it all, like you said, there are about seventy-five nominees, and they all show up. They're they all, all up. on the stage, <laughs> on the dais. dais. They each have a moment to share um, their their feelings about being there and being a part of the theater community. And it's all they're all so just they're just so excited to be in each other's company. And it's so obvious and it's contagious. It's just a fabulous day. It's it an is. afternoon is what it is. It, it is, it, it is, it is a great afternoon and it's celebratory. It's one of the first um, awards of the season. So we sort of kick off the theater awards season. Um, and uh, as you said, it's just very celebratory. Sometimes it gets a little, um, it's just more funny. And sometimes it's just, you know, people, you know, that are, you know, looking at their peers that are on the same day as and they can't believe, you know, oh, I grew up watching <laughs> this person, you know, which is like, if you're on the receiving end of that, it always feels like, oh, great. You know, like you were in second grade when I was on Broadway for the first time, kind of thing. <laughs> a lot of that, but it's just very, um, very inclusive and just really very special um and that will be uh as i said on uh, may 19th um at the zigfield ballroom so so yeah and the, the the drama league all this the money that's raised goes to support the uh director's project uh, which is a um, an initiative for early career stage directors. So it's not beginners, um, it's people that have already proven themselves within the industry. And every year we have about 10 to probably about 15 of those. And that program, um, that initiative has been around for, um, I guess it's just over 40 years now. Oh, so wow. we have about 400 of these uh, Directors Project alum out in the industry and they continually, uh, you know, show up on Broadway um, every season for probably the past 10 years about one-third of all the Broadway shows are directed by a directing fellow that has come out of this program so it really is just very special and it's a you know it's a it's a mentoring home and it's also an artistic home for these directors for their entire career so they are brought in uh, when they're picked and uh, you know selected as fellows and then they stay within the you know, the, the Drama League's directing um, project within our circle to then mentor the next generation, which is what makes it really so successful. So when these people are actually directing on Broadway and they're bringing in these other fellows to come in and watch how it's done, it's really, um, it's been really successful. It's um, just one of the, the best programs to not only just teach somebody, but really give them an opportunity on a did, professional stage in New York City. Did, didn't Diane Paulus come up through that program? Diane Paulus. So this right now we have, as I said, Lair de Bessonet, who's being honored. We have Diane Paulus, uh, Chris Ashley, Alex Timbers, who's got uh, Moulin Rouge, and also um, uh, Here Lives Love, which will be opening in the summer. Um, uh, but they're extraordinary directors. Michael Mayer, who's doing Funny Girl right now, and Michael Mayer has something else right now. I can't think of. But you know, it's about a third of the directors that are on Broadway that are um, that are there, and then the ones that aren't there are at uh, you know they're artistic directors around the country at regional theaters, um, or they're teaching at colleges, or they're the head of uh, the theater departments at colleges. Um, so it's you know four hundred of these fellows that are out there um, that are alums that are just passionate about this program and will say if it wasn't for the Drama League's Directors Project program, I, my career wouldn't have been what it is. And I think that it just accelerates uh, their place within the industry. Um, and, and that's why they support it. They come back and they're happy to mentor the next group of fellows. So yeah, um, I've I've seen Diane Paulus speak about it, how how much it, it impacted on her and how much she wanted to give back because of it and, and how much the, the drama league meant to her. But you, they, they, you guys do extraordinary work. It's it's uh, it's it's thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Yeah. Well, happy let, let, let's get let's talk about Broadway HD. Because Let's it's, talk it, about it's been, I mean, it's a, how many years? Eight years since you were going there? into our eighth year at Broadway HD. So we were well ahead of the pandemic, well ahead of, you know, a lot of other streaming companies that have, uh, some of them have come and gone already, uh, not just theater streamers, but other, um, you know, in the pandemic, a lot of, you know, Peacock and a lot of other, um, you know, streaming, a lot of other cable companies decided they were going to, you know, fast track their streaming 
marketing, um, you know, uh, companies and, and put them out online during the pandemic. Um, and now we're watching how some of those within the industry of these, what they call OTT, the over the top uh, platforms for, uh, for um, content are now consolidating or they're bundling. But um, Broadway HD in the pandemic really just, uh, we were already there. We were already online. We were, you know, as I said, uh, launched uh, eight years ago. Um, with a vision to create, you know, serve the theater fans around the globe and serve the next generation of theater fans. But you have an extraordinary mission to bring to bring the theater to people that have never seen it before uh, or, or may never be able to even get there without Broadway HD. Yes. I mean, we are a global platform. Our content is out there. And, you know, the the Globally, these uh, types of shows, the world is underserved. Um, when we have here in the US, we have 41 Broadway theaters here in New York City in Times Square. We have about 200 touring theaters um, that are Broadway touring theaters across the US. And then there's you know, uh, probably about like 50 countries that Broadway tours go to, um, <clears throat> but it's not consistent. You know, the, the tours aren't out there all the time, not all the, the shows tour. Um, not all the types of shows are available. Um, some countries don't allow certain types of content um, to be uh, streamed um, by their citizens. <laughs> they are a little bit more um, censored, some of these shows. Um, so uh, we're, you know, serving up uh, Broadway uh, caliber shows, Broadway and Broadway caliber shows around the, around the world and um, on a subscription basis. Uh, so we're eliminating these barriers to entry. So whether that's uh, geography, whether that is price point, or whether that is any sort of physical limitations that people have hearing or see, you know, sight um, impaired in any way, um, that we can, with the technology, we can assist with that. So, um, and it's, you know, through our social media and our customer service, people just are so grateful and thankful that, uh, that we're providing that. You know, we have here in the U.S., we have over 300, uh, I think close to 350 shows, and these are full length stage plays and musicals. Um, well, what, and what, what's also very special about what you do is the way you capture them. You, I mean, it's, it's, it's not with two or three cameras, it's like how, at seven or eight, or how many cameras do you use? Well, I mean, there's no one size fits all. So this right. we have some one person shows and those are less cameras. Um, but we have, you know, sometimes 14 cameras um, in the theater to do these captures. So and, and, and the captures sometimes you I mean, you can go from a wide to a close up really fast, which you can't do in the theater. So you can see sometimes things that are really happening on the stage that you wouldn't be able to see from your seat in a way. And then you can go back to a, a transition back to a full shot and you still have the whole thing it makes it more intimate sometimes it, it is a different experience it is a different experience it's not the in-person experience so you are uh to your point with th there's a couple elements um, involved in capturing a show. So to be very clear, a digital capture or a live capture, or sometimes it's called a pro shot, is very different than a movie. So if anybody saw Hamilton that's uh, streaming now on uh, Disney+, Plus, it's you go into the theater where the show is going on, there's an audience there, and you see as if you're sitting in a theater seat or, or to, you know, depending on the camera angle, on different, you know, theater seats. But you're basically seeing what you would see if you were in the theater whereas a film is very different um, you know a film version of West Side Story is very different than a digital capture of West Side Story or Funny Girl or um, you know Phantom of the Opera so it's a it's a different kind of experience that way and we have with Broadway HD when we bring our uh, TV crew in we try to preserve the integrity of what the stage director's vision and the stage you know the, those creators of the stage version what their vision was because to your point with cameras going in you could make it be something very different so we get tv directors um like don roy king like lonnie price uh like ellie Heyman, that are passionate about theater and they want to bring to you know to the tv screen what that theater director had in mind. Um, so we don't change anything. We enhance lighting yes. sometimes and we enhance sound and that's to make it more like the 
theater in theater experience. So sometimes it's, you know, the, the dark corners of the stage need to have a little bit more lighting in order for the state, you know, for the, the TV cameras to capture what was going on back there or sound to make sure that everybody is mic'd properly um, so that the sound is pristine and you're not hearing the orchestra over the people's voices, um, you know, uh, to, you know, so that it's the, it's the correct balance with all of that. So it's really um, another art form of bringing in it's stage, you know, creators with TV uh, directors, TV stage uh, professionals. It, it's phenomenal. You, you, it enhances your, your captures. Enhance in, in, in the way that you said what what they what they intended. It enhances it in a way that actually makes it a little bit more intimate and personal. I, I they're fabulous. I've seen so many of the things. I've even seen some in the big theater because uh, you've been, you've you've shown some of them on in the big we theater. We did do in cinema. Broadway HD yeah. has done in cinema events with some of our content. So um, and they so were yeah. just work just work work just as well there as they do on the small screen any size you want to show them on so let's talk about some of your titles how many titles do you have all together We're, we have about 350 now so that's stage plays and musicals um and even within those there's different types of shows so with stage plays we have some that are you know plays that have you know 10 or 12 people in them um, we have uh, musicals that are, you know, two-person musicals. And we have a one, you know, couple of one-person musicals up to, you know, uh, 42nd Street that has, I think, this 40, this like close to 50 people in the cast. It's phenomenal. <laughs> um, it's just, it, it's just so beautiful. Um, just such a, a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, capture. And it just sort of refreshes and renews people's interest in going to see the live because what we're finding with Broadway HD is that people see these digital captures and then they say I love that show I love that music I want to go see it and I think we're finding that more and more because you know years ago that was a concern um, that uh, of what we call in the industry cannibalization of the live ticket sales so what that means is when a Broadway producer who spent 20 million dollars to produce a Broadway musical is trying to sell those tickets for 125 dollars a piece is a concerned that if there's a digital version of that same right. show streaming on like Broadway HD, we're $125 for all of the shows on our platform, you know, or $12 a month right. that, <laughs> you can, you know, that you can watch that. You can watch our 42nd Street on Broadway HD instead of going, or you can watch, we have a version of Into the Woods. So you watch that instead of the one that is now on Broadway, or you watch Funny Girl on Broadway HD instead of going to the Leah Michelle version. You know, so people were concerned about that, but we're still streaming those shows and it's not damaging the box office for Leah Michelle or Phantom of the Opera that we have or Jesus Christ Superstar. And you, your feeling is it may even be enhancing it is what your feeling is. We do find on we have, I mean, it's it's not hard data because there's no one Right. The, the shows aren't exactly the same. Like if there was a formula to make all these shows successful, we would all have Hamilton, right? You know? But it, they're all different. And so with the digital capture, it's different. And people's reaction to it is different. But what we're finding with our exit polls of things, with our surveys, with our you know questionnaires that go out, is that people are, the risk is eliminated quite often. So people will watch a digital version and then they realize that I really like that show or women buy most of the tickets for Broadway shows. And so they'll watch it and then they'll say, oh, now I know my husband is going to love this. So I'm confident in buying you know, two tickets for $125 a piece because he'll love this. I've already vetted it. The risk is eliminated. I know we're both going to love this show. So we're finding that more and more, Right. Uh, you know, that people or they become familiar with the music. Um, I think especially after the pandemic, people are very much um, looking for familiarity. You know, we, we, our, our life was so disrupted for a while. They'd like, let me give me something that I already know the music. I'm already familiar with the characters. Just give me the, you know, the comfort, you know, the, the, the show that's going to be comforting, the one that I know. Um, so we're finding that, uh, you know, quite often is, is the case. Um, and we're also finding that, you know, that's how people 
theater is, is, a, is an art form that's been passed generation to generation for centuries. And so with the digital piece, we're finding that it's the training wheels for the next generation. So parents and grandparents can sit with these children in their living room and have a communal experience in the same way that you'd watch a movie on your big screen TV, but right. watch a Broadway HD show. So they can watch Wind in the Willows, or they can watch 42nd Street, or they can watch Kinky Boots or Cats on their big screen TV and introduce the younger kids to this art form before they go to the theater. Because going to the theater is a a different kind of experience. So you can, when they're little, you don't want them, you know, somebody's paid $125 for a ticket. You don't yes. want a little kid behind you talking through the whole show. You don't want them kicking the seat. You don't want them, you know, like asking questions all the way through the show. And 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 you want them to be familiar with things like the orchestra comes up very loud at the beginning. The lights are dark or they're off in the audience, you know? So those things that, that young children don't experience till they go there, that experience has been talked through at home. You know, you can stop and start, you know, you can go get a snack. You can be eating, you know, your sandwich while you're watching right. you know, you know, with your, with your grandchildren kind of thing, which you can't do in the, in the, in the, you know, in the Broadway theater. So those sorts of things are how we're now introducing the next generation or the next, next generation to the art form of theater. Um, because it is something that is very um, much relies on word of mouth and passing down this art form to another generation. So, um, so we're, and, and you can, with a big screen TV, you know, cause most people think like, well, online, I'm watching it on a little computer screen or I'm watching it on my phone. And that's not the case because like Netflix, like, you know, Amazon, like all these other, you know, bigger, you know, Hulu and bigger streaming services, Broadway HD has all the apps. So you can watch these things on your big screen TV in the same way that you watch any of your other, um, you know, TV shows that you're now streaming. Um, so that, you know, sitting there in your living room and having this communal experience where you're talking about the show, you're all laughing together, you know, you're all, or as I said, with, you know, younger kids, you can actually interact and talk about the show um, as it's going on. And, and, and that's how you introduce them and what the etiquette is in, in a theater. And you can even stop and play again and teach them things exactly. all at the same time, which is really cool. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, so, we're, the time is going so fast and we, we have yeah. a little clip, we have a clip, but I wanted just of a, of a one, just to give them a taste because we haven't let give them a taste of what uh of mr tell us about mr saturday night there was a mr. Uh, saturday night one of the most tony nominated shows of this past season so it stars billy crystal based on the movie that he did it's it's billy crystal david pamer shoshana bean um you know and they were all tony nominated uh randy Gra uh Oh my God. And, you know, they were all Tony nominated, amazing performances. Um, and, uh, you know, so we were able to capture it because it was a limited run. And I think that's one of the really special types of content that we have at Broadway HD are these shows that were limited runs. Billy Crystal is not going out on tour with this show. So this is really the only way that you can see it. And we have it exclusively on Broadway HD. So yeah, Mr. Saturday Night. Let's, let's see it, Jody. I'm glad I brought a little joy Your hearse is waiting at the door I'm glad that I can bring some laughter and cheer To everyone here When did you start being funny? It should be any moment now, Gene. <laughs> Come here. There you go. Oh, good. No diaper. No diaper. The world could use a little joy So that's just a little tease. You'll have to get Broadway HD to see the whole thing. <laughs> uh, what are some of the other um, recent things that you've acquired? There's something you're doing, um, Phantom of the Opera. You just uh, the we have we actually have Phantom of the Opera is actually ending on Broadway after right. 30 years um, uh, th this weekend, actually. And so I think you know they're probably going to refresh it and do something else. It's still out on tour in different places, but we have a beautiful, beautiful concert version of Phantom of the Opera um, that is just, you know, amazing to watch. Um, we have, uh, what else? I mentioned 42nd Street before. We have an Into the Woods. We have Cats. We have, you know, um, Jesus Christ Superstar. We have Kinky Boots. We have Mr. Saturday Night. 
the, the play with Joe Roth saw it. Indecent was it? Oh, Indecent. Yes, oh, that yes. was a play by Paula Vogel. Um, that is. Uh, she said that it was. She said the, your, the capture of that was just extraordinary. It really uh, is. And again, it was a show that just didn't last long enough for everyone to see it. Um, but it was, you know, it's a play that has music. It's an important play um, that is just really special. Uh, Katrina Lenk was Tony nominated for that performance. Um, and then Katrina went on to win um, a Tony Award for the band's visit the next season. She, um, she was mesmerizing in that. She's she just was, something else. Oh. Yeah, she's just uh, terrific. And this was really, I think this was her Broadway debut, actually, in Indecent. Um, and as I said, it was uh, Paula Vogel it, uh, that wrote it and Rebecca uh, Teichman, who is a, a Drama League director's uh, project uh, wow. alum, that actually won a Tony Award for uh, directing the show because it's just it's just beautifully, beautifully done. Um, so yes, and Daryl did this amazing, uh, Daryl Roth did a just gorgeous uh, production on, on Broadway. So um, that didn't last long enough, but we've preserved it for generations to come on Broadway HD. Well, she was very appreciative and she thought you did a terrific job. <laughs> so we have about two minutes left. Is there anything else we want to hit on in the last two minutes that we didn't talk about? What would we want to hit on last? No, I just, you know, I I, I thank you so much for... Um, oh, thank you. Let's remind everyone the Drama League Gala is coming up May 19th because that's a limited time offer. you got to get your tickets soon if you want to be a part of it. And it's one of the most wonderful afternoons in the whole theater. It's my, my I think my favorite award shows because it's so intimate about right. it. Thank you. And Broadway HD makes a great gift, whether it's for Mother's Day or for your, uh, you know, uh, for your grad in June or the dads. Uh, so just go to broadwayhd.com and uh, sign up for a subscription there. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Patrick. Oh, thank you. Why, can you can you share anything about next season in the last minute that, that you're excited about? Um, there isn't anything that I can actually announce. Okay, God, I understand. <laughs> So we'll, we'll, we're gonna we'll save that for next time, okay? You must come back. You promise. Thank you. So much. Thank you. <laughs> my my love to Stu. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I would. I wish I could actually share. Uh, oh, I understand. I understand. We'll we'll, 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 we'll do that later. On our content. What's that? Well, we'll do that later. We'll we'll come back and talk about whatever else is coming. Okay. I love that. Thank you. So thank you so much, and I'll see you soon out in the in the Hamptons. And then we'll probably see you at the drama league, if not before. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Patrick. Talk to you later. Ciao.